everyone, and welcome to this episode of Writers in Fusion. We are filming from the Cambridge Library in Massachusetts, and we have a big group with us today. Um, and so we want to thank everyone for being here. So I'm Susan Zoll, I'm your host. Uh, for my team, I'll do that first. We have Dave, Julie, uh, Jen. Ed's currently off camera, but he'll be sitting down with us momentarily. We have our guest today. Our guest critique is Amaria Orenstein literary agent of Go Literary in Boston. Um, we're really happy to have you with us today, so thank you for coming. Oh, my pleasure, I'm so happy to be here. And um, Amaria also does other critiques too, if you ever come to the Boston Book Festival. Sometimes she's part of Writers I Know to help them too. So, and our guest author today is Globiana. So thank you Globiana for coming today. We are going to have Globiana read her story and then we will start with the critique. This is Young Adult, I didn't have a title, is there a title? No. No title yet. That's totally fine. The novel. And <laughs> like I'll, read, I'll read the summary and then you'll go right into the critique. Jonathan, a rock musician, encounters a woman who challenges his notions about what it means to be a man. As a result, both experience insights that change their lives. Right away, he didn't like her. In the first place, she looked all wrong. She was way too small and she didn't have any shape at all, hardly. Her hair was brown and thin, too long. He wondered why she didn't do something with it. Cut it, maybe, or at least fluff it up a little. And she had this annoying left of center smile, like she knew something he didn't, or, or like she knew some secret about him. Where had Sledge dug her up anyway? Jonathan slung his guitar strap over his shoulder and across his back, twisted to catch it, and fastened the free end to the bottom of his guitar. He carefully stepped among the mic stands, speakers, monitors, and cables, and plugged into the amp. The others had finished checking their instruments and equipment. Rex fiddled with his keyboards. Sledge arranged the sticks and settled into position among his drums. The girl Sledge had brought to audition looked around the cramped rehearsal space. Her guitar, already tethered to the amp, hung free against her chest. Wait till you hear this guy, this girl. She's got something special. Sledge was talking faster than usual. Okay, Jonathan scowled. Let's play Your Rise. Do you know it? Yeah, she knew it. She moved right in, just the way Teddy used to. She must have memorized the CD. It was so easy, just like having Teddy there, as long as she didn't look at her and her stringy hair. The old energy was coming back. Surprising. He hit hard on the melody. She was right there. The pulse was back. Oh, yes. And then she was pulling him off the beat. He tugged back. Why couldn't she hold the beat? She had the attention span of, of something with a small attention span. They started to stumble over each other in an undignified mess. Cut! Jonathan made an angry distortion on his guitar. Rex's keyboard went silent. What's wrong, man? We were moving. Why did you stop? Sledge shot a short tantrum on his drums. What do you mean, why? Jonathan was mad. The bitch was messing us all up. The bitch just stood there, looking at Rex, at Sledge, looking at him. Johnny, whined Sledge. I told you she could add something interesting. Give it a chance, will you? I don't think so. What's the matter? Afraid to try something new? I just don't want to have to fight my musicians, that's all. It's about playing together. Vendetta was listening to the whole thing with that awful little grin, like she knew she was going to be Jonathan's new bass. Jonathan turned to her, trying to feign patience. His lower jaw jutted forward, then back. We need to build slowly. We gotta get the tension to sneak up. To pull it off, we have to move together like one brain, so the listener doesn't know something's happening until it's happened. You have to stay with me, he paused. Can you do that? Yeah, I can do that. Can you do this? And she fingered the theme, then struck a skipping little riff that brought her back to the beat, only off, off not even half a beat, like a hiccup, like a stupid hiccup. Yeah, that'll drive you right in the circle. It goes nowhere. We're wasting each other's time here. As he turned away, he thought, and wiped that smirk off your face and get a haircut. This was one damned irritating woman. Come on, man, it was Sledge's voice. She really can get the sound we've been looking for. Where are you gonna find somebody that can play like her? Well, 
find somebody. By Friday, sure by Friday, Jonathan was determined to do what it took to find somebody, anybody else by Friday. Let's just give it one more shot, Sledge suggested. It'll only take a few minutes. Maybe we can work this thing out. Vendetta just stood there, looking like she didn't care if they played again or not. But she didn't put her guitar down either. All right, Jonathan glanced at her. You want to? She shrugged her shoulders and moved her left hand along the frets noiselessly. Okay, same song. Now follow me. And again they were into it. The piece throbbed along. She stayed with them. As they reached the end of the song, Jonathan was sweating. His heart was pounding and he was panting to the beat. She was good, damn it. He tried to act casual. He slid his right hand into the front pocket of his jeans, shifted his weight to his left foot, and thrust his left hip out. His hand was strangling the neck of his guitar. If we let you play Friday, can we count on you to stay with us? Yes. You won't mess around? No. Okay. She walked away. He called after her. 9.30 sharp, the can tap. Are you familiar with what sledge gives you? She didn't turn around. She raised her hand. She kept walking, snapping her fingers to some beat Jonathan couldn't hear. Impertinent bitch, he muttered. Mm -hmm. Thanks for leaving. Thank you so much for the opportunity. <laughs> so, um, I liked this. I thought it was a good uh, opening scene. I, I definitely have a bunch of comments I'd like to go over, but I still, I mean, I like it as an opening scene for a book, kind of different than a lot of other things I've had, I happen to read. So I, I don't even know where to start. Like, how old are they? Great uh, question. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Jonathan is, is um, 17, 18. Oh, he is? Yeah. Okay, um, so then I think we need to know that right away because Re your summer... Rex, Rex is 22 and he has the benefit of age. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right away we have, and Amaria can do the, answer this better than me, but you know, it's called Young Adult. Um, the summary sounds, it's a, a woman who challenges his notions. That sounds, you know, like a novel but not young adult. Mm -hmm. So, I, and, and so that because we don't know any of their ages, you know, I could guess that they're 17, but I wouldn't have guessed that. I would have guessed college, mm -hmm. but I, I don't know. So I think that's something maybe somehow I have to let us know right away. Maybe someone just got their car keys. They can just start driving, right? It doesn't have to be that you tell us their age. There could be some other reason. Right, but I think college. you don't want to specifically say, oh, he, as a 17 year old, he thought that because yeah. that feels like too much of a giveaway, but mm -hmm. I think you're right, some sort of clue because there is a little bit of a discrepancy YA, and then especially with the language, because the, my first question was, oh, is this too much swearing for a YA? Because I wasn't sure mm. how old these characters were supposed to be. I did get the sense that they were probably in that age group, but I think you're absolutely right. There could be a little a little clue, maybe, you know, something about her shapely body. We get a set, like, then we know she's not a 12 year old, or, yeah. uh, you know, something. Yeah, her body's the body of the guitar. I can't really cover with the musical instrument of comparison. So that was that was my first big thing, just knowing their ages. If they, and that's a technical thing; you can look that in in different ways. So I don't know if anyone, anyone anyone else. I guess you know, even though I liked it overall, I I don't know if I needed to feel a little bit more empathy for Jonathan. I mean, I kind of did. I mean, I could kind of get into him, but I felt like I needed to do it more. Um, you know, he doesn't like these people, but you have to be careful between us not liking him either, because if he's too negative and you don't know why, maybe if you make him miss Teddy more, then we'll understand that he's so unhappy having to replace Teddy, that that's why this is so much more difficult to go through. And also maybe a little hint as to what happened to Teddy, because you yes, mentioned several times remember. that Teddy is Yes. No longer with. I mean, is he dead? Did he move to another town? Is it Maybe, I think Teddy's a girl. I, I yeah. have no idea. Yes, it is not. Is it permanent because of she set them off? Was there, was, was there, there a, a fight? Mm -hmm. Was there exactly? And and that might be a way to work in the. You know, if if <coughs> the reason. And, well, do you have a reason for Teddy's leaving, or did you? Yeah, just you don't after? want to reveal that yet. No, he crashed his motorcycle. Well, oh, see, okay, so oh, I thought Teddy. But if we knew that he crashed his motorcycle, we know how old they are. 
yes. know that at least they have driver's licenses. Yes. They are in their late yes. teens, early twenties. And do they feel sorry for his for his accident, or are they angry with him for doing something stupid yes. to get him in that situation? Oh, yeah, I think I think you need that tension for us to feel connected yes. to this and to yes. understand. I, I understand Urgency. that the band is in transition oh, right oh, now, oh, but oh, I don't oh, really oh, understand why. Yes. So it's hard for me to feel invested. And I, I think if we had a bit of these details, and you don't have to dump it all up front, right. but if we had some, you know, he missed Teddy might give us the sense that Teddy is dead or has moved away. You know, yes. if, if there are ways to work that in subtly, I think it would really help to bring the reader into the story. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I did feel a little distance. Mm -hmm. That's how I was too. Okay. So I liked it, but I found it a little distance. But I do love your descriptions of the musicians readying themselves and playing their instruments. You have musician friends, I'm assuming, or you're a musician yourself. I have, I have musician friends. I go to their rehearsals. Yeah. Excellent. So and do they have creative names like this? Or did you? Once named Hacksaw. I love it. Oh, I love it. I, I'd also like to see interaction among the three remaining musicians because we're getting in Jonathan's head. We don't really know how Sledge and Rex care. Well, you have to be careful though. You don't want to, you have so many characters in the first few pages. I'm just, or just in the interplay in, in their conversation, one or two, um, I can handle one or two. So it says, oh no, 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 but one. I actually, I, I hate to play devil's advocate, but I want to take a little bit of a different approach. Okay. I actually, um, I appreciated the description, but I crossed out the entire paragraph where Jonathan slings his guitar over his shoulder, ah. crosses back, twists mm -hmm. to catch it, carefully steps. Because to me, first of all, I already knew that this was bad practice, and so this felt a little bit like an info dump, like news flash. In case you're not sure, we're in a band practice here, and it felt like it was cutting the flow of starting the story to explain who each character is. Where I'm going to meet the characters, the, the other band members naturally throughout the course of the chapter. But I sense he was reluctant because he finally did. They were already set up, and that's what I thought. But I, I but thought I thought that, that that was kind of irrelevant to the scene because the focus of the scene is his sort of obsession with this girl that he doesn't want to like, but is clearly intrigued by. And so yes. I kind of let me let me try something on you. I had it at right away. He didn't like her. She looked all wrong. I actually, I also crossed out in the first place because that to me felt much more formal than the rest of the language that he was using. So it just, right away, he yeah, didn't like her. She looked all wrong. Mm -hmm. She was too small and didn't have any shape at all, hardly. And then the hair thing, again, because I didn't know how old the guys were, I thought that's a lot of attention for a guy to pay to a girl's hair. Would he, notice, thing, would he notice that it's too long? Would he care right. that it's like, I like the line later on about the, not having to look at her stringy hair. But this to me felt, made me question the voice a little bit. It just didn't seem to me like how a teenage guy would react to a girl. Like he would notice other things, uh, okay. I think, not her hair necessarily. And it also, I wondered, this seems like a rock and roll band. I would think that long stringy brown hair is perfect. <laughs> it just doesn't, it seemed, so it seemed a little inauthentic to me. Well, um, I but like I think what you said too about the paragraph. Sorry, because you're right. I mean, most people know what it looks like with a little bit. Right. So if you went right from she was way too small and she didn't have any shape at all, hardly, and she had this annoying left of center smile, like she knew something he didn't, or like she knew something secret about him, and then you get Sledge's excitement. Wait till you hear this girl. She's got something special. You get right into the action. You get right into this tension between the two band members, and the other guys will come in after. Right. Um, I think it just gets your story moving a little bit faster without saying, by the way, here's character one, here's character two, here's character three, these are the instruments that they play. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you're ready to read my story. I want to encourage you to have Vendetta react more. When he asked, uh, when he says, let's play your eyes, do you know it? Uh, I think she should nod confidently, I know it. To say, yeah, she knew it, we want to get it from her. And when, um, at the end, uh, she could nod but tipping her chin. She'd be very subtle in her movement. I also want to hear her reaction, see really her reaction to uh, what do you mean why John was mad, that the bee was messing us all up, and you have her just standing there. Even if she's standing and not verbalizing anything, I'd like attitude. I'd like jut it out of Kip. I'd like, I'd like to, to see the steam coming out of her ears. I would like something because she can't just be standing there passively. I think this girl has an edge. I had the exact same reaction. Attitude. This girl has attitude, and I want it to lose off the page. Yes, because she's a bass player. Oh, oh. well then. <laughs> I don't know enough about music <laughs> to know what that means. Really? Well, you're not kidding. Yeah. Bass players don't have attitude. Really? 
Are you a bass player? I am now. Uh, ah. Wait, is this a sibling thing or is this a known no, no, thing that no, bass no, players no. don't have attitude? Lead, lead guitars too? There are very few lead bass players. Wow. They're oh, their background. Uh -huh. But they're the crate that holds the rest of oh, the music. Yes, absolutely. That's yes, where the music, it's all inside yes. the bass. Mm -hmm. And that's why she could. But you don't think as a girl coming from. in trying to so fight her way timing. into a new band, she's got to prove herself before she could take that attack? Look, look at female bass players on YouTube. Okay. That's about yeah. it. But as they've said, it's not just it's not the drummer, it is the bass player who carries it. And she's changing the timing a bit. It's yeah, she's, a hiccup. Yeah. yeah, she's got uh, uh, full control of the group at any time. And uh, she has to agree to the lead guitarist mm -hmm. to follow his lead because she can haul the, the music away at any time she wants. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's that powerful, the bass player. Uh, that's what she did. And that's exactly yes, what that's she did. The guy yeah, yeah. <clears throat> when I read the, uh, the summary, I'm shaking my head. I said, this is worthy of a Steinbeck, this kind of, <laughs> kind of writing. It is so, there's no shootouts. There's, it's all human emotion being dragged one way or the other to the art of the writer. The author has to do this. Uh, and there's no fancy way of doing it other than developing characters. And I think you've developed some wonderful characters here. She is, I have an image of her right now. She said, she's flipping the bird to everybody in the band. I know what I can do. You'll catch up with me. <laughs> And that's essentially, I think, what's going to happen. Because the, there was an ego problem. The, the, lead, the, the guy who followed me, Jonathan. Jonathan has an ego problem. He's losing his control of the group, or the, the power in the group. Maybe not the group, but the power in the group. And uh, that's what the summary says. And good luck to writing that so it doesn't come out hokey. Because it really can't. I, I went into this uh, determined to not like the story. <laughs> it's oh. just. It was, but uh, another teenage band, and uh, I think you did a wonderful job of not talking yeah. about the band as much as you talked about the people. Because, and Ed will probably throw up when I say this, literature is people. I've heard that. You've heard that before? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what you've done is you've done a wonderful job isolating uh, individual characters who are unique. They're not the bland, ordinary types of people. And I think you have a, a, a launching point with this first uh, section. I, I, I thought it was terrific. Oh, thank you. I think that's phenomenal feedback, and I think you're absolutely right about the characters, and I think that's why we're pushing you to develop some of them a little bit further. Can I ask a couple of questions that I was wondering while I was reading, but your your points made me think I have to know the answers. This Is this your opening chapter? I was thinking of it, yes. Okay. I think it's a really strong, so summary, is that the summary for the whole book, or is that just the summary for this chapter? That can supposed to be the whole book. It's, uh -huh. it's about the whole book. Really, okay. But. So, I, I guess but the focus I written is, it all yet. Right. So, 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 that, <laughs> so that's something that is going to have to be developed a little bit further because I actually thought that you were just writing the summary for this chapter and I uh -huh. found that a little bit confusing. But since we're talking about characters and you really want to make these powerful characters, I want to make a suggestion. Of, I, I assume this is the title for the chapter, not for the book. Yes. Yeah. I want to suggest that the t chapter title is just Vendetta. That to me is so much more powerful than Jonathan meets Vendetta, which is very, again, instructional. It's, you're telling me what's going to happen in the yeah, chapter. She's probably not and even going to be Stay Vendetta. I'm changing all their names all the time. Oh, really? Okay. I like Vendetta. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think it works yeah. well. Oh, it's I good. do too. Yeah. Well, how would you like Mischief? <laughs> No, like I Vendetta like better. Vendetta. Mischief to me is a little bit corny if you're, yeah, if you're really puppy. asking for a puppy. Yeah. I think Vendetta's well, better. Jonathan started as Sid. Because, Sid, I like Sid. Well, See, I love Sid. 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 There is the, I used it so that I could develop the character. Okay. I called him Sid. Oh, I like and that. And now I think I kind of have that character, so I changed his name to something more okay. ordinary. I love it. Rex and, and Sledge are still in process. Yeah. So we're thinking Excellent. Sid Vicious for Jonathan? <laughs> well, Sid Caesar, I, I, perhaps? Sid Caesar. No, I can see Sid, Sid Vicious was a real character. Yeah, I And know. as you're writing, the image you had in your head of Sid Vicious, you put in, that's a that's good, what I did. That's a good yeah. way. You're overlaying yes. a that's new character. What I did. But then I had to change his name because. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. And, that, and that's okay. That's, yeah. You I did, like that. that's you did good exactly process. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it worked. Can, I, can I ask a couple questions? Uh, so, one thing, when I read this, I was stupid, and I didn't pay attention that this was young adult. I was just reading it as uh, 
novel about rock musicians. And uh, I didn't get a sense of them being young at all. So somehow the, the youth has to come across more. I assume that they were in their 30s. And one of my questions Wait, are you was, implying that in your 30s is not young? <laughs> so a question of perspective. Uh, 50 is the new 30, so uh, yeah, I hope so. Yeah. I, I did not have any notion that they were 17. Let's, let's put it that way. I agree. Uh, and, and one of my questions was, how famous is this band? I mean, is this uh, is this just a garage They're playing the can't have They're playing the can yeah. 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 They haven't made the Middle East yet. Okay. Yeah. Right. Oh, God. <laughs> great no, great no, throwbacks no. to my team. Uh, so, so she is being introduced to the band, but we have no idea what her role in the band is going to be until page two. Yeah. It's only on page two that we find out that she's going to be the bass player, rather than, yeah. my, my assumption was she's going to be the singer. Right. Ah. So, yeah, I assume so. Well, yeah. so again, she had a guitar, but I, I, so I, I, I had a fixed? bass guitar. Oh, it's very important. It. Mm -hmm. Actually, it could just be well, a bass true. guitar that would fix the whole yeah. problem. Yeah. Yeah. That's a different I, didn't, I didn't really pick up on that. Okay. Well, it, from the beginning, from the beginning I was wondering what is her role, and I assume the singer. And I wonder how famous is the band, and then uh, the, her name is you. And I don't know what the you know what the convention is for stuff like this, but all everybody else is mentioned by name except her. She's the and bitch. Then, right, yeah. she's the bitch. And then on page two, her name is used by the you know by the narrator, not by anybody in the in the actual room. I would like to keep her the girl or so. the bitch. For that old sex, when you yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah but that, I, I didn't know who that. she was. I didn't know who they were talking about. I thought there was right. somebody else in the room named Benita. Yeah. yeah, I didn't realize it was the oh, actual girl. Yeah, ah. that's one thing I already changed. Yeah. Oh, okay. But uh, but those were the only things I, I, I like liked. A lot of phrases that you had, like the annoying left of center smile. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. That's yeah. A, that's it's a, a nice quirk. Yeah. yeah, nice little twist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, just to build off on what you were saying about the name, I like that we didn't, I was okay with she, she, she when, when it's Jonathan looking at her and assessing her, mm -hmm. but by the bottom of page two I wrote, when does she get a name? <laughs> like, at a certain point I feel like you're teasing me and, and you're trying really hard to be suspenseful, but there's nothing mysterious about mm -hmm. her name. I, I, I do need it somewhere. I, yeah, and, and, where, here. When you have, um, what do you mean, why Jonathan was mad, the bitch was messing us all up. I understand that he calls her the bitch, but then when the narrator said the bitch yes. just stood there, I thought, wait a minute, like why is the narrator against her? Um, and that was what prompted me to ask when she gets it. The narrator is Jonathan's brother, and he's upset too. Okay. <laughs> right. At, what, that, what you know, at that point, I would just say Vendetta just stood there looking at Rex. Looking at it, then we know she's the bit. You know, what if I put the bitch in quotes? Would that make a difference to you? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. I was no, I, I would, the first her. thing I would do was cross out the quotation marks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Don't it's interesting that. that Jonathan's the only one who talks to her. Yes, uh -huh. when Sledge is the one who brought Sledge, her in. Yes, yes. Sledge yes. is bringing her in. Yes. Sledge mm -hmm. never well, dresses her. That's a great I, point, yeah, and, and I wondered, is there, a, because Sledge is so overly enthusiastic about this girl, is there a love story there? Ah, well, if you yeah. say right here at the, well, for my first page, where do you hear this girl, but he knows yeah. her name. Yeah. So he wouldn't say that. He would, but say, he would say that to his friend, wait till you hear this girl, yeah, but then he girl. would say she, Vendetta's got something yeah. special. But isn't or, she or standing something. right there? Yeah. Yeah, he can say that in the other room. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wrote that yeah, there, this too. Girl. I wrote Just that down, too, because I thought... Like, I would throw something at, you know, wait till you hear this girl, she's got something special. Sledge was talking faster than usual. Maybe that prompts Jonathan to wonder, like, he must have a thing for a vendetta. And then we get her name, and then we understand that who she is, mm -hmm. and that she, you know, something, something like that. Yeah. I put, I mean, I, there were a few things I just added some you know, a couple of lines in where I just wanted a little bit more. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if I should all go into it now, but the second scene where she she does, you know, she takes over essentially and, and Jonathan gets mad. And then he says, the bitch was messing us all up. She just stood there and then Johnny whines, Sledge, I told you she could add something interesting. Give it a chance, will you? I put that he should, he should say that that wasn't interesting. That was messing up on purpose. I just felt like it needed a little bit more of a reason, but I wrote that in here. You don't have to write that down. So I just made some line edits like that, and then I agreed with what 
percent earlier than I thought. <coughs> more physical tags required. So even if you know we know that she doesn't have a lot of, um, I don't know what the word is when Ed was talking about. She's the bass player. She won't have any arrogance or anything. Mm. He's still sometimes talking to her. I mean, she still exists. So I felt like I needed to see that a little bit more. When he's not just talking to the drum, she's how does she react to that? You know, right near the end, she's saying, he's saying, can you do that? And she's saying, yes, I can. But there was no physical tag at all, like he said. So that was the only thing that I had in here. I don't think they're hard fixes, but I have that in here. We have, um, does anyone else, we have about two more minutes. Yeah, so uh, I agree with everything that, that everybody said, so I, I won't belabor that. The only thing, um, just on a technical, and I want to ask your opinion as an agent too, is that when you have internal thought, you don't put quotes on it, you italicize it. Do you agree with that? Yes. Um, okay, so um, so I just kind of made some comments about that. The other thing is, is that from a story perspective, um, she comes in and she plays one song, and then she's in the band, and they're gonna go out on stage with her. Like, wouldn't they have more practices with her? Like, how do they know that she even knows all of the songs? They're gonna put her out in front of an audience? So it was kind of like, she, she didn't even play the whole song. Do you know what I mean? It was like, okay, you're in. Let's be at the can tab at 9.30. I feel like that, that that's very risky. I don't know. I'm yeah, having yeah, a bit of a of their right? desperation. Yeah, they, have to, right. they, they have to get someone in there. Yeah, yeah. Also, they're 17. It's not like the, the, they're playing that night. Like, it's like, like, she, came for, she came for 10 minutes. Like, couldn't she have come for two hours? Right. I don't know. Okay. That just seemed risky, though. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not in the band, so I wouldn't know. I coach sports for many years, and I could tell before the first practice whose uniform was going to be dirty the whole season, and who would only pick up splinters off the bench before the first practice. I think the same thing is true with musicians. If you're familiar with music and you know how musicians act and how they play and so on, you can pick up that they got it. They, they just, they'll pick it up, and even if they don't study the music, they'll win, and they'll do a good job. It's, uh, it's, there's something spooky about it. And the second thing yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know anything about music. No, no. So. But, but, play all over Boston all the time. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. First and time then, together, there they are. Um, so I learned something. Yeah. And the yeah. second thing that was an eye-opening experience for me was uh, this group and the uh, invited visitors like saying "bitch" on tape. I found that fascinating. <laughs> I, said, I was amazed. I said, I, said, I did it. Yeah, I was I amazed. It's, it's, so that's my final. Is that frowned upon? <laughs> no. I don't. Only by Julie. She won't I won't say the ass word. I won't say this. Could I just, I can might. I come in on, on that um, about the two hour practice? I actually, I, I also don't know much about music, but it made sense to me. It worked for me that this was a quick scene. I also think that if it becomes a two hour practice, the scene is going to drag on yeah. and you want this scene to move quickly because this sure. is just setting up the action. Um, and so I, I worry that if we, if you went the route of a two-hour practice, this scene is just going to become a little bit. Well, of course, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to like to have more of it. Rather than having her leave, maybe just have it go. All right, let's do the next song, and you can end right. it. Like, See, I'm not saying, I kind of like the turn. attitude that she does. That that she just walks off, and he just kind of yeah. goes with. Like for some reason, like, how's that for me? Like yeah. If you think yeah, about what Dave said thing. about sports and how you know before they start, it's just like a singer. You ever it's see what's that so smash? where Catherine McPhee is on that show. <coughs> and she walks in to do this audition and in 10 seconds he knows that she's different. It's kind of like I mean, when I you read a manuscript, like you know within the first line a little bit how it's, how you're gonna feel about the piece. Yeah, I right. Like I said, I don't know anything about um, we can ignore everything I said. So can I throw in one last thing as you wrap it up? And I, I won't go into the details, but there were a couple of places where I just felt like your dialogue was a little Monday, especially with a YA audience, you have so little time to capture their attention. So there were just a few lines that I'll have you take a look at off camera that I struck out that I thought keep mm -hmm. keep moving without this. Yeah. Yeah. But otherwise, I thought it was a great great effort. Yeah, yeah I like it. There. Thank you all. This was amazing. Oh, and Thank tell you. us what's happening on Friday because twice on page three you reference Friday, Friday, and again because we don't know how famous the band is or anything. When when you have the line um, by Friday and he says sure by Friday. I would just say sure, and then have Jonathan was determined to do what it took to find someone, anyone else by Friday. You know, I, when they yes, played their first many. concert yeah. or whatever, whatever mm -hmm. it is, fill in something. Because right. you, you're, you're, again, you're just kind of dangling it in front of us, and it's not a big thing. Yeah. Oh, then we, then we yes. know what the like Friday. Do they record their first album? Do they have their first public performance? Is this, you know, 
then so then we get a sense of birthday party. Right. Yeah. Maybe they're playing a birthday, birthday, birthday party or a bar mitzvah. They go to a can tab. I'll just tell you, it's their first can tab without Jenny. So 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 then. Jonathan was determined to do what it took to find someone, anyone else, to perform their first can tap without, you know, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. whatever it is. Cool. Yeah. 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 Thanks for coming cool. in Thank you. and for submitting. And um, you'll see too that you'll get all the scanned pages with all of our notes. Yes. So that you can go through them. I'll send those to you within a few days. And the um, audience will see that too. That's right. The audience right below the video, they'll see that that's on our website, that they'll be able to review all of the notes as well. So, thank you so much. So thanks for coming in. Amaria, thank you for joining oh, us. Oh, pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, and, and, and thank you for, for being brave. Right. So well, yeah, so really, I could never do what you're doing. <laughs> it is scary. <laughs> I know. So they tell me. <laughs> well, thank you everyone for joining us for this episode of Writer's Infusion. We will see you next time. Keep writing. Okay. okay.